The Cheese Boy 628 Show, starring Cheese Boy 628. Hey YouTube, what's going on? This is Cheese Boy 628 here today giving you another Theory Thursday. And this Theory Thursday we'll be talking about OU Balanced Rain Edition. So I have an awesome rain team here that my buddy Triple Finish Gaming made for me a while back and I'm like, this would be a pretty good team to show off for a Theory Thursday. So here you go. So this team consists of a Scarf Toad, a spinning just defensive tentacruel, and defensive ferrothorn, sending up all the hazards, Scarf Celebi, Sashed Mammo, and Expert Belt Latios. So it's a pretty unique team. I really like using it, honestly. I think Tentacruel is really fun to use. And Expert Belt Latios is nice to just trick people and just be like, what? How can it do two moves? I thought it was scarfed. So yeah, the team is pretty unique and it's kind of challenging to get used to at first, but eventually gets pretty fun to use. So let's see why this team's so good. So this first match is actually versus an opposing ring team. And so what I'm trying to do here is just have Ferrothorn set up as many hazards as possible because he doesn't have a spinner. And so that'll definitely weaken his team and limit his switch-ins. So as you can see, the team will be pretty balanced and it might seem kind of stally, but you may notice that I have had two Scarfers on this team being Celebi and Toad. And you'll see how that kind of hinders this team a little bit later. but. It is nice to trick them into thinking, oh, maybe they have one scarf or two scarfers, because I have heard that before, that they've been confused. But anyway, as you can notice, these spikes are really taking a toll on this guy's team, as it does 25% to every grounded poke, because I have all my spikes up. And so I can just be in with Politoed here, and I'm kind of scared, I don't know speed tiers too well, but I'm pretty sure max speed Timid Jolteon probably outspeed Scarf Toad. But I'm not entirely sure, don't quote me on that. But anyway, I love using this Tentacruel here. I'm able to go for the knockoff, so fun to use, and since I took out the Choice Scarf, I actually have enough speed investment that I'm able to take out that Lando by outspeeding it with the Scald. And here I'm just joking around with the Mammo, seeing how much I can do with Ice Ghost Spear to see if I can take out the Rotom Wash, but it is an amazing counter to Mammo, so it's not able to do such. Nonetheless, that was a successful battle, and let's see why this team is kind of hindered in some ways. So this battle demonstrates some of the points I'd like to talk about when this team is actually being used. First off, when you look at his team you see Zorark and Terrakion. And you know Zorark's known for shenanigans and Terrakion's known for big power. But what you need to realize is that if it's scarfed, if either of those are scarfed for that plus speed nature, they outspeed my entire team. And what you have to really note is that when someone has the fastest poke on the field, they can generally be referred to as the guy with the most momentum. So you definitely want to try hindering those with T-Wave or just have a faster poke and like wither away those Scarfers as soon as possible. Because otherwise, like I said, they outspeed your entire team. My Latios isn't Scarfed, it's Expert Belt. It's nice to bluff it sometimes, but sometimes it's a bit risky and too risky at that. Also, Ferrothorn is certainly a problem, although I have my own Ferrothorn which is known for being quite the wall. Other teams that use Ferrothorn are quite the nuisance as well because you can spin your hazards away potentially with Tentacruel, but Iron Barbs are certainly a thing, so is Lead Seed, and what if they have a Ghost? Yeah, it makes it really annoying, especially since Jellicent is used quite a bit in this tier for being one of the only bulky ghosts out there. Now what's kind of funny at the end of this battle here is that he misses Stone Edge like three times with that Terrakion, and so if I would have just switched out instead of going for HP Rock over and over again with Selby, I probably had a chance of winning, but instead I just kept going for HP Rock in the case that he was able to hit me eventually. It was also kind of interesting that I was able to survive one Stone Edge with a decent amount of health, so if I would have just switched out came back in, take the stone edge fairly nicely and just retaliate with the psychic, I would have been fine. Or if I would have just predicted nicely at the end with Mammo getting my rocks up, I actually would have done that 6% necessary to take out that Terrakion since it lived with 4%. And then I could have easily taken out the Heatran with the EQ, of course. So that is the team. Jolly Mammo's a bit difficult to use in my opinion. 
I feel like a more offensive approach works, but Sash can work sometimes to break those sweeping pokes, although most sweepers like Cloyster and such have skill links, so that's kind of the hindrance to Sashed pokes, but even then they can't really do too much to Mammo anyway, and if they're on their focus Sash, Ice Shard is always a thing. So I hope you all enjoyed this Theory Thursday. I certainly learned a lot from these battles and just working with this team a lot. Thank you Triple Finish Gaming for showing me this team and allowing me to post a video with it. So yeah guys, thank you all for watching, like, comment, sub, and until later, peace.